Hello everyone. In last section, we learned the theory and features of UF and MF processes. In this section, I'll introduce the design of these two processes. First, let's look at the filtration mode of UF and MF membranes. The major two filtration modes are dead-end filtration and cross-flow filtration. As shown in this picture, in dead end filtration, the flow of feed is vertical to the membrane, and large particles are rejected on membrane surface. With the increase of filtration time, the rejected particles accumulate and form fouling layers on the membrane surface. Consequently, filtration resistance would be increased and the flux would be reduced if the operating pressure is fixed. Thus, that end filtration is usually intermittent. It must be stopped periodically to remove the fouling layer before the next filtration. This mode is easy to operate and suitable for lab research or small-scale occasions. The second mode is cross-flow filtration. Propelled by a pump, the feed flows on the membrane surface. Such mode contains two types, external pressure and internal pressure types. For the external pressure type, the feed flows outside of the membrane and filtered by the external surface. Driven by pressure, components smaller than membrane pore size penetrate inside of the membrane. The filtrate is discharged through the central channel. For internal pressure type, the internal membrane surface is the filtration surface. The feed flows inside of the membrane and the filtration is from inside to outside. The filtrate is collected outside while concentrate flows out from the central channel. In cross-flow filtration, the rejected particles will be flushed away by the shear force when the feed flows along the membrane surface. The falling layer is usually relatively thin. Once the falling layer gets stable, the flux would stay stable as well in a rather long time. Since it's good for falling suppression, cross-flow filtration is widely applied in engineering application. Next, I'll present the basic process parameters in UF and MF processes, including water flux, operating pressure, and rejection rates. In UF and MF processes, water flux could be calculated by this formula. The water flux is proportional to the pressure difference on both sides of the membrane, that is inversely proportional to the filtration resistance. The filtration resistance includes the membrane resistance Rm, the resistance of concentration polarization Rp, which is formed in the filtration process, and that of gel layer Rg. Then, let's move on to the concentration polarization and the gel layer. Take UF membrane as an example. This is a UF membrane. In filtration process, mixed liquid with different sizes of molecules flow through it. Under the pressure difference, components smaller than the membrane pore size would pass through the membrane and become filtrates, while those larger than membrane pore size would be rejected. Those rejected components gradually accumulate on the membrane surface to form a boundary layer. The solute concentration in the boundary layer is much higher than that in the bulk solution, thus forming a concentration difference between membrane surface and the bulk solution which would lead to the inverse diffusion of solute on membrane surface towards the bulk solution. This is concentration polarization. It's unpreventable in filtration process once a membrane is put into operation, but it is reversible. It would disappear if the filtration pressure difference disappears. When a steady state is reached, the material balance could be established like this. The left side of this equation is a solute flux through the membrane from the boundary layer. It equals the solute flux of convective mass transfer into the boundary layer minus the diffusion flux from the boundary layer to the bulk solution. Integrate with boundary conditions and suppose the solute concentration in the permeate CP is negligible. We can get this equation. 
This equation reflects the degree of concentration polarization in UF process. A larger ratio of the solute concentrations on membrane surface CM and in the bulk solution CB indicates a severe concentration polarization. So this ratio is called the concentration polarization ratio. With severe concentration polarization, as shown in the picture, a gel layer will be formed on the membrane surface. When the concentrations of colloids and macromolecular solutes on the membrane surface exceed their solubility in the solution. Such concentration is called the gel concentration of Eg. The corresponding formula for water flux becomes this. Here, the resistance of gel layer should be calculated. Then, how to calculate it? Look back at this formula for flux calculation. If the resistance of gel layer is much larger than that of concentration polarization, the formula can be simplified into this one. Suppose the resistance of gel layer Rg is proportional to the accumulated volume of filtrate and the pressure. And after substitution and transformation, we can get this formula. We can see that delta P over GW is linearly correlated with delta P. Hence, through experiment, the correlation figure between delta P over JW and delta P could be plotted, from which we can get the membrane resistance Rm and the coefficient lambda, and finally we can get the resistance of gel layer Rg. The second parameter is operating pressure. As the driving force of UF and MF processes, it directly affects the water flux. Increasing operating pressure would increase the water flux, but when gel layer is formed, the operating pressure would affect the resistance of gel layer as well. This figure shows the correlation between flux and pressure when UF membrane is used to filter certain wastewater with emulsified oil. At high content of emulsified oil, the flux doesn't increase linearly as operating pressure grows. It's mainly due to the increase of resistance of gel layer on membrane surface with increase of pressure. It offsets the increase of water flux from increasing operating pressure. It's clear that in UF and MF processes, the formation of gel layer is unfavorable for operation and can affect the energy consumption. The formation of gel layer is attributed to concentration polarization. So in UF and MF processes, some measures should be adopted to suppress the concentration polarization and gel layer, like increasing the flow rate of feed water, increasing the turbulence level on membrane surface, constantly cleaning the membrane surface and so on. These measures can suppress concentration polarization and alleviate the formation of gel layer so that the negative effect on filtration is reduced. The third parameter is the rejection rate. It's calculated by this formula based on the concentration difference of impurities in influent and affluent. This is all about the design of UF and MF. We have finished all contents about membrane separation. In the next chapter, we'll start to learn oxidation and reduction. Thank you.